this video uh, summarizes what you learned in the investigation. So um, from the investigation, you learned that interior angles of all triangles, regardless of whether they are regular triangles or irregular triangles, all triangles add up to 180 degrees. Quadrilaterals, all quadrilaterals, the interior angles of a quadrilateral, they all add up to 360 degrees. Um, and in the investigation, it had you look at um, what happens when there's five sides, what happens when there's six sides, what happens when there's seven sides, and so on. And what you should have realized in the investigation, they had you split it into number of triangles. So for example, if I take this shape and I were to split it into triangles, I end up with that many triangles. So the number of triangles you end up with is always two less than the number of sides. So for example, this is a six-sided shape, and I end up with four, one, two, three, four different triangles. Recall that each triangle equals 180 degrees. So if I have four triangles, the sum of the inside of the shape must be four times 180. So the formula that you should have learned in the investigation was to take the number of sides, which will be n, and subtract 2. The reason for doing that is the number of sides minus 2 equals how many triangles the shape will be able to be divided into. Then, if you times that by 180, which is the angle measure for each triangle, you will get the sum of the interior angles of any shape. So if it has 20 sides, you just do 20 minus 2, get 18, and then times that by 180. If it has 10 sides, you do 10 minus 2, which is 8, and then times that by 180. So another thing that was in the investigation that you did was the definition of a regular polygon. So a regular polygon is a special kind of polygon in which all sides and all angles are equal. And then it also talked about how do you find the angle measure of each individual angle within a regular polygon. So all you have to do is find the sum of the interior angles of that polygon and then divide by the number of sides. So for example, a pentagon, you have five sides. So if you have five sides, you can make three triangles. So five minus two, that's three. If you times that by 180, you'll get 540 degrees. That's the angle measure of the interior angles of a polygon, any polygon. For a regular polygon, you know that all the angles are the same. So if you just divide by 5, you will find out that each individual angle will equal 108 degrees. So let's look at some examples of why we need to be knowing interior angles. It helps us find missing angles in triangles and other shapes. So for example, if we look at this first question, um, we have to also use some knowledge of geometry that we've already learned. So for example, the angle A, to get angle A, we know that it's opposite this 45 degrees. So we know that A is 45 degrees. Um, we also know that here, this angle C is supplementary to 132 degrees. So to do that, we have to do 180 minus 132. And when we do that, we get 48 degrees. So that's for angle, whoops, angle C. Again, that's because C and 132 are supplementary. Um, to get angle B, if we look, A, B, and C form a triangle. So what we do is we need to add 45 plus 48. So 45 plus 48, and we get 93. And then we know that triangles add up to 180, so we just do 180 minus 93, and we will get the missing measure, which is 87 degrees, and that will be the measure for angle B. To get D, we know that D is supplementary to 45. So we just do 180 minus 45 and we can get D. And then we know that D and E are opposite and so it will also be 135. So all we're doing is extending some of the things that we already know about geometry and including interior angles with that. So if we look at the shape down here, this is a quadrilateral. It has four sides. So we know that quadrilaterals add up to 360 degrees. So we've got to find all of the missing angles. So a couple of them should be pretty straightforward. So for example, C and AD are supplementary. That means they add up to 180. So to get C, we just do 180 minus 80, and we get 100 degrees. 
A and 125 are also supplementary. So we do the same thing. We do 180 minus 125, and we get 55 for A. To get B, we have to recognize that this is a quadrilateral. And what we need to do is add 80 and 55 and 100 together. Oops. And when we do that, we get 235. And then we just take 360, which is the sum of angles in a quadrilateral, and we take away 235. And we get 125 degrees, which will be B. So let's look at another example. Uh, this one's a little bit trickier because you have to look at the little tick marks and you have to recognize that the tick marks mean that this is an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, two angles and two sides are equal. What you do is to know which ones are equal is you follow the sides that are equal. The angles that are formed at the bottom of the two sides that are equal, in this case A and B, are going to be the same. So for example, what I mean by that is if this is my triangle, and let's say these two sides are equal, then the two angles that will be the same are the ones at the bottom of the two sides that are equal. Okay, so what that means is I know that this triangle, 70 plus A plus B, has to add up to 180. And three, or sorry, 180 minus 70 is 110. So that means I know that A and B together have to equal 110. Because it's an isosceles triangle, I know that A and B have to be the same. So all I actually need to do is do 110 divided by 2 and get 55, and that's what A is, and that's also what B is. And that's because they told me with these tick marks that it was an isosceles triangle. To get C, all I need to do is realize that B and C are supplementary, and I do 180 minus 155, and I get 125. So you're going to be able to try finding some missing angles of your own with various different shapes and polygons and using your knowledge of opposite angles, complementary angles, supplementary angles, and interior angles of all polygons to find the missing angles. This last page is just a review of all of the names and number of sides in different polygons. You're going to find that helpful when you're using the formula. Remember, n minus 2, number of sides, take away 2, times 180. That will be helpful to know. If I said, um, what's the interior angles of a decagon, you have to realize that a decagon is 10 sides, and so on.